Blizzard has just released new runes for Season of Discovery, and with our tier list that we made last week now being out of date, as well as some updates that I might have based on what you guys said for at least shamans from last phase, I think it's time to start updating our tier list based on what we know now. So first, let's go into Rest of Shaman, as this is the thing that a lot of you guys commented on before. How do you guys said I was underestimating completely Rest of Shaman because of Chain Heal being unlocked at level 40, meaning its spell rank is really good as well as them being able to now get Healing Tide Totem. So, I do not believe that Chain Heal is going to be as amazing as people believe, because Dis Priest and Resto Druid have Penance, Pyramending, Wild Growth, all on runes, which means they're also scaling with every single level. Which means even while leveling, they'll be constantly getting better, all the way up to level 40, just like Chain Heal. And... They're also kind of, in my opinion, better than Chain Heal. Um, Resto Shaman does offer Mana Tide Totem, don't get me wrong. But all of these runes are meant to be kind of better than our base spells, and they really are. So I do think Resto Shaman is going to be really nice, and as they aren't really, at least under the preview, having any more runes that we know of currently being added, Obviously, we'll know once the data mine comes out, but based on what the preview is, we don't see any currently. I'll move it, I will be moving them up to A tier, because I do think I did underestimate it a little bit, but I do not definitely think it is S tier. So with that, let's jump into our new runes. First off, we have Druid, which gets Eclipse and King of the Jungle. For Eclipse, Starfire increases the critical strike chance of your next two Wraths by 30% and Wrath increases the critical strike chance of your next Sunfire by 30%, both effects stacking up to 4 charges respectively. Both spells also gain 70% chance at all times to not lose casting time when you are taking damage. Now this is really good for Balance Druid, however, I still do not believe it's going to be enough to really make a dent in terms of what it does. Um... Yes, they get movement conform, but as I said before, it doesn't really give much, and as well as their talent tree doesn't give as much as every other talent tree as well. This definitely helps, however, I do not think it's going to be the big pumper that people think it will be. Um, I believe, if anything, it's going to be top of C tier, bottom of B tier, but I don't think it's going to be anything really special. For Feral Druids, they get King of the Jungle, which is a boost to your Tiger's Fury, where Tiger's Fury now increases all physical damage you deal by 15% instead of by a flat value, and instantly guarantees you 60 energy. It is no longer on the global cooldown, but it now has a 30 second cooldown. This is really nice for Feral Druids, and it's going to really just keep them up in their S tier spot that they already have, as both Hoarded Alliance need Winch Fury. Horde now have access to Enhancement Shaman, which we'll get later, but in terms of Alliance, who don't have access to a Shaman, need a Wind Fury, therefore keeping Feral GPS in the S tier for at least Alliance. We will go over it again when we get to Enhancement Shaman, don't worry. So, next up, we have Hunters. Melee Hunter gets a buff in this patch, with the Rune of Melee Specialist. Raptor Strike cooldown is now reduced to 3 seconds and is now instant, kind of like flanking strike or like quick strike for warriors. Uh, Mongoose Bite cooldown is removed, which is good, except the fact that Mongoose Bite does like absolutely no damage. And Raptor Strike has a 30% chance on attack not to trigger its cooldown, which is really nice. It's definitely a buff to melee hunters, however, it doesn't make melee hunters any better than the other two specs for hunters. So if anything, it's going to be... C tier, and if anything, not played. Uh, unless you really want to play it by the Hunter, because it's definitely viable, it's just not as good as the other two specs. So, C or not played, whichever one you prefer, it could be bottom of a D, maybe, depending on how we see his damage doing, but it's definitely not better than BM or MM. Other rune is Trap Launcher, which many people were speculating Hunters would be getting which allows you to not place your traps at any location within 40 yards and can be additionally placed while you're in combat. This is massive, as now this will be another damage increase to hunters as they don't have to pre-place their traps and they can place multiple traps throughout a fight, depending on how long the fight is, obviously, because if you can kill it before your trap comes back off cooldown, as you're killing it really fast, it's not really going to make too much of a difference, but you get my point. 
Additionally, your fire base traps and your frost base traps now have separate shared cooldowns. So all of your fire traps are going to share a cooldown and all of your frost traps are going to share a cooldown completely separate from each other. This is really nice. It's not really going to change where hunters are. They're already in A tier. They have really nice single target damage, but uh, it's not going to be enough to really bring them into S tier. Obviously, again, this is a room preview. There's only two rooms that they're showing us. We'll know later on the data mine, but we'll make another update to our tier list. But for now, both specs are really going to stay in A tier, as this does affect both specs, and it doesn't really bring one spec above the other. For mages, mages get Missile Barrage and Chronosag Preservation. Both of these really benefit Arcane Mage, which is interesting to me. A lot of people seem to be thinking that Arcane Mage wasn't to be estimated in this phase and that Arcane Mage was going to be really good. Now, Missile Barrage gives your Arcane Blast a 40% chance and your Fireball and Frostbolt spells a 20% chance to reduce the channel duration of your next Arcane Missile spell by 50%, reduce its mana cost by 100%, and the missiles will fire every 0.5 seconds. This is really nice for Arcane Mages, but it does require the Arcane Blast rune. So... Because of that, this could be also really good depending on what else is going to be in the belt rune for arcane healers as this does give you more really healing in a way as arcane missiles is an arcane spell which means it does affect your healing. For chronostatic preservation, it fuses arcane fire and frost magic to freeze chronomatic energy into a storage state for later use. You can hold this energy for up to 15 seconds before it combusts and expires. But on Unleash, it heals a friendly target for X amount. Arcane Fire and Frost for interactions with other spells. And whatever is what it's considered for when it comes to like talents and stuff like that. So it'll take benefit from all of those. Um, this is basically just a really nice heal that you can hold. It's not really that much to... It's like a, it's like a really instant heal that you can pr act activate or whatever i assume it's going to be a cast time that you build it up and then you store it to like actually spend it or something like that so it's like something you use when you have downtime is what i assume it's going to be because we obviously don't see a cast time or anything with any of these spells so that's pure speculation but based on what this is saying i assume that's what it's going to be because why would you activate it and when you can then hold it for 15 seconds if it's an instant cast so i highly assume it's going to be a cast time and then you can hold it so like you use it before something big happens so that you can just instantly use it on whatever friendly target it is. This is really nice for arcane mages. It definitely increases their healing that they're doing. However, arcane doesn't really bring the utility that actual healers that were originally intended to be healers bring into the game, as well as they also bring pretty good healing. So because they don't really have that one half of heal things that healers bring, they're just still going to sit in the B tier in terms of the healing side. Um, they do definitely bring more damage, and Arcane Mage might end up being what you play in uh, for DPS Mage. However, when it comes to being just a pure healer, it's not better than the other healers. If you're struggling in Nomorgon, it could become like a third off healer kind of a thing where you're playing arcane in terms of doing damage, but you also have some of the healing spells that would make it so you can also help your fellow allies whenever they're needing it. But your main idea would be damage, and you're just there for off heals if it's needed. That might become the role of arcane mage, in my opinion. But Moving on, we have paladins. Uh, Holy paladin is going to be getting sheath of light. Dealing damage with your melee weapon, so they want... Uh, holy Palins that I'll play melee, kind of like retail. Increases your spell power by an amount equal to 30% of your attack power for one minute. In addition, your critical healing spells heal the target for 60% of the amount over 12 seconds. This isn't really amazing as Holy Paladins don't really build attack power, obviously, as they are a healer and they're going to be looking for spell power. So... It's not really amazing as when, again, they're not really building the thing that gives them more spell power. So it's really just another dot when you critically heal. The other part isn't really amazing. And because of this and the changes 
to discipline priests that we'll get to in a minute, I'm going to be bringing Holy Paladin kind of down to the B tier because this priest ends up becoming just a better option. Same thing with Resto Shaman. They, in a 10 man as well, it's just harder to justify bringing them over the other healers. When we get to 40 mans, 100% we're going to want the single target healing of the Holy Paladin. But for now, in terms of a 10 man, it's just not looking like it's going to be amazing um, when we have all of these other options that bring better utility, as we'll see with the uh, Priest Rune that we're going to be getting, as well as better AoE heals for the rest of the raid. For the other whole, uh, Paladin Rune, though, we get Guarded by Light. This is probably going to be for Rep Paladins. Each time you hit a target with your melee weapon, gain 5% of your maximum mana per 3 seconds for 15 seconds, but the amount healed by your Flash of Light, Holy Light, and Holy Shock spells is reduced by 50% during this mana regen. This is a 15 second mana regen, and I guarantee you Holy Paladins are probably not going to want this because they can have a 50% reduced healing to like their healing spells for 15 seconds whenever they do this. But it'll be really nice for rep paladins who aren't actively looking to heal and it'll help them keep up their mana while they're fighting which currently is an issue because of holy paladin going down on the list this actually moves rep paladin up on the list because you want to have two paladins in your raid for the blessings so we're going to be having a prop paladin and a rep paladin now instead of a prop paladin and a holy paladin based on these changes that we have now yes obviously we don't know all of the runes this is based on again the preview that we have so when the changes come out for the data mine for phase two, we can go over this again. But for now, Rep Paladin definitely moves up and Holy Paladin definitely moves down. In terms of Prop Paladin, we see no change here. Um, I do believe they are going to be in S tier still. Uh, obviously, they're probably going to still get changes. Um, I also noticed this is supposed to be over here in my bed. But I, I do definitely believe they're going to be an S tier healer. For priests, um, we have two different things, one for shadow, one for healer. For shadow, I am kind of disappointed. Um, however, I still hold out hope that maybe another room that they aren't showing off right now is going to be Vampiric Touch, as I know a lot of people that play Shadow Priest do not like Mind Spike. So the fact that they added it is kind of not what I was expecting. Um, but Mind Spike blasts the target for 108 to 126 Shadow Frost damage, increases the critical strike chance of your next Mind Blast on the target by 30%, stacking up to three times. So this will be still good for Shadow Priest. However, it's competing with Mind Flay, as it would probably be your filler spell instead of Mind Flay. Um, this could be good and bad, as Priest will more likely take Twisted Fate next patch as... Uh, the mechanical enemies in Gnomorgon will be immune to diseases, which is what Void Plague is. And so you will probably be taking Twisted Faith instead, which increases your Mind Blast and Mind Flay damage by 50%. And this buffs Mind Blast, so that will help out a lot. However, I don't think it will be nearly enough to help out Shadow Priests. And so they will be probably dropping down to the B tier, as they are not going to be the only priest in your raid. As for our second rune that we're getting for priests, which is going to be moving this priest, in my opinion, up to S tier to be your second best healer, along with Resto Druid, two top healers, it's going to be Pain Suppression. Instantly reduces all damage taken by a friendly target by 40% and increases resistance to dispel mechanics by 65% for 8 seconds. This is an insanely good rune for priests that they are getting, as they can use it before a big damage is coming to a tank and negate 40% of it. Um, I, I don't really... It's very basic, so it doesn't really need too much explaining. It's just a really good uh, rune that priests are getting. And so because of it, it they're just being moved up to S tier, as Holy Paladin didn't really get what it wanted. And it's honestly just better than Resto Shaman, which currently isn't getting any boosts to... In terms of runes, obviously they still have to add them, but based on what we know now, we currently don't have what it is. So based on what we know now, Disc is moving up to S tier, and it's going to be one of your best healers in Nomergon. 
In terms of rogues, they're getting shark and toss and master of subtlety. One of these is more for PVE and one of them is for PVP. And shark and toss is that PVE talent that does AOE. Um, 25% of their attack power also strikes up to four nearby uh, targets as well as the main target. And then it awards a combo point. This is probably more so going to be used for tanking. Tank rogues now have a way to do AOE damage, which helps them get threat on those other targets than just their main target, as rogues mostly are single target. This can be, and probably will be, used for AOE for rogues. It's just 25% of the attack power is kind of meh. So I can see this kind of being buffed in the future, possibly. Um, in terms of Master of Subtlety, attacks made while stealth, and for 6 seconds after breaking stealth, cause an additional 10% damage. This is going to be a PvP te rune, so it doesn't really affect us in terms of PvE. For rogues, they're really not going to change. Subtlety tank now has a way to do damage for AoE to get some AoE threat. However, the other tanks are just better. So it's really just going to stay in the B tier. Um, for the other rogues again it gives them a way to do melee but it's not really the best melee or sorry it gives them a way to do aoe but it's not really the best aoe ability so they're not really going to be moving um they're where they are more so because the best runes for rogue right now are all about poisons and bleeds yes they have the backstab build but it's not as good and they were probably are probably going to be switching to said backstab build for normagon because all of the mobs in normagon are immune to pleats and poisons well most of them are all of the ones that are at, towards the end are um so yeah rogues are going to be staying where they are in a b and c tier in terms of the dps for shamans they actually get three rune previews and it's really interesting because we have the uh boots and belt in grave runes which is what all of the other ones have been as well as a new chest rune this is interesting because it means that they're willing to add new runes to our old rune slots, which means some of the classes that we have seen before might be getting new runes in old rune slots as well as the new ones. Obviously, we'll have to wait for the data mine, but this is really interesting to me, and I think it should be interesting to you because it means you might be replacing a rune that you're currently using with a new one that we'll get in the future instead of just adding them on. But for shamans, we're starting with Spirit of Alpha, which is infused at the target with the spirit of an alpha wolf, increasing all threat generated by the target by 45% for 30 minutes, limit to one target. It's a nice utility room, but it doesn't really affect your damage, obviously. Um, currently, tanks probably are not going to have any issues with threat, so I don't see this being really an amazing room unless tanks start having that issue with threat. But because of Prop Paladin having... Uh, Consecrate and Righteous Fury, I don't see them having any issue. Um, in terms of Warriors also getting their AoE Shout Taunt, I don't see them having very much of an issue either. For Enhancement Shaman, Tank, and uh, DPS, they get two new runes. There's no runes currently for Ellie Shaman, so I see for Ellie Shaman, they really aren't going to be moved. Um, same thing real quick for Fire Mage, because I know we covered Mage, it's probably not going to be moved. We have yet to see the DPS difference, but uh, Arcane could be surpassing Fire in terms of DPS. Um, for Maelstrom Weapon, though, back to Shamans, when you deal damage with a melee attack, you have a chance to reduce the cast time of your next Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Lesser Healing Wave, Healing Wave, Chain Heal, or Lava Burst spell by 20%, stacking up to 5 times, last 30 seconds. This is a staple for Enhancement Shamans in terms of retail, and it has been a really good talent for them uh, in retail and other expansions and now they're adding it into classic and i can see it doing just the same i think this will be really good for enhancement shamans in specific two one-handers dual wielding enhancement shamans less than what we're going to be saying is the two-handed mastery rune which is going to make it so that when you have a two-handed weapon you get a 30 percent attack speed with two-handed weapons for 10 seconds whenever you strike an enemy yes this is really good but with two dual wielding one-handers you're going to be getting those maelstrom weapon stacks way faster so because of that, I think Enhancement Shaman DPS are going to be staying two one-handers unless they really want to play two-handers. Maybe in PvE, they can try to run that, run that one-shot build that they like to run. But in terms of the best that they can pick, it's definitely going to be two one-handers with Maelstrom Weapon. Um, currently, the tank for Enhancement is up here. However, 
they aren't getting access to a real AOE damage to They're kind of like rogues did. And so they're really just more of a single target tank and they're kind of struggling in terms of the killing, being able to kill trash in the raid. And Normagon has a lot of trash. So because of that, I'm going to be bringing them down probably in line with the other added specs of Rogue Tank and Warlock Tank as they just don't have that AOE tanking capability that the other ones, or that the other tank has. For Warlock, actually before we go to Warlock, let me uh, quickly mention uh, Feral Tank. Sorry, I forgot about this. Uh, Feral Tank will be getting more in terms of the AOE tournament, so it'll be better in terms of that what I just mentioned, being able to keep uh, other things in check in terms of that. However, it's still not the best tank. Um, it's probably just going to be prefer that you play Feral DPS instead of Feral Tank. Uh, when raids move to 40 man, Feral Druid Tank will probably be good for trash pulls, but when it comes to boss pulls, it's best left to other tanks. For Warlocks, um, we get Invocation and Dance of the Wicked. Invocation is Refreshing Corruption, MLA, Curse of Agony, or Siphon Life when it has less than 6 seconds duration remaining. It calls you to deal instant damage to the target equal to 1 period of that spell's periodic damage. So most of these are ticking every 3 seconds, so in that last 3 seconds you're able to refresh it without losing that last tick of damage, it'll just do it. It's just a quality of life room pretty much, so you don't have to time that perfectly. It's not going to change really what Warlocks are running. They're going to keep running Destruction and Affliction. It's not going to be played. It's not a damage boost in any way. It's just a quality of rife room. Um, obviously, there's other runs, again, as we have yet to see. But currently, based on what we see, it's not going to change. Dance of the Wicked is also really nice for Warlocks. As you and your demon pet gain dodge chance equal to your spell crit chance. Each time you deal a crit to an enemy, you also gain 2% of your mana back. You and your pet. This is really nice as it gives a warlock a way to get mana back as it has been an issue for casters and this should help alleviate that issue. It doesn't really change where Destro is sitting. It's looking really nice. This just helps them out a little bit more but it doesn't really move what tier they're in. In terms of warlock tank, again there's no changes so they're not really going to move on the tier list because of it. Uh, last but not least, though, we have Warriors, which is looking really nice as they get Rallying Cry, which grants all party and raid members within 40 yards 15% increased maximum HP for 10 seconds. Really good defensive room. Um, and because of all of the things that Warriors are getting at level 40, as well as Enhancement not really getting any way to do much AoE, uh, Prot Warrior is definitely going to be moved up with uh, Prot Paladin. Um, because of this change as well as just all of the abilities that they're getting in the bracket of 25 to 40. Uh, in addition, they also get Blood Surge, which is Heroic Strike, Bloodthirst, and Whirlwind have a 30% chance to make your next slam within 15 seconds instant and cost no rage. This could be good, but I don't think it's going to really matter because we currently have Prot Warrior and Furrior S tier, so I don't really think it could really bring them up a tier. So it's nice for warriors, obviously, but it's not really going to change where they are as they're already at the top. Our untouched specs really are frost, which doesn't really change. You're going to be running one of the other specs. Affliction is going to be running one of the other specs. Arms warrior, you're just going to be playing fury warrior or prot warrior. It's simple as that. Uh, holy priest, you could you could argue that holy priest does a lot of healing, but in terms of a ten man. It's just better to bring a Disc Priest. Um, they just have better utility. They're getting... Um, what's it called? They're getting... If I could quickly go to my talent. Power Infusion. While Holy gets more healing, but they don't really get more utility in terms of, again, Power Infusion, Divine Spirit, and... Because we're only at the 40 bracket, we're not at the 50 bracket, we're still in 10 mans. Uh, we also have our Resto Druid. I, I believe this Priest will just be straight up better than Holy Priest. Um, not to say Holy Priest is bad, it's just, just again, as it's just a better, this better options. 
Uh, I believe we have covered everything. Uh, rest surgery didn't get moved because it didn't have any additional stuff. However, again, based on what it has, currently it's in S tier and it's competing up there with Priest. Uh, if you have anything that you disagree with me on this list, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I reply to anything that I can. I see all comments. I read all comments. And I try to reply to ones that I think I have input that I can give. Um, yeah, if you like the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.